three, two, one. Here we go. What's up, everybody? Namaste. My name is Danny, and thank you so much for joining the light side. Today, I have Robert Peck with us, and we are going to be talking about the Special Olympics. He is an event founder for the Special Olympics, created this amazing program called um, the Champions Challenge, and a couple more. We'll get to that. <laughs> and he's also a local event coordinator for um, UCP and some other organizations in his area. So he's kind of like this local big brother in the area. So, Robert, I am so excited to finally be, have you on my podcast. We've been talking for a little while on Instagram for a couple years, actually. And now here we are finally creating content Woo. together. Hi. Woo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, thanks for coming on. Okay, so no first. No problem. Yes. So first, let's just start with a little background. Like what? Like tell me a little bit about yourself, about your story. You have a degree. Good. Yes. Let's go. <laughs> so basically what happened was like when I was born, my parents basically just told, put him in a wheelchair. That's all you can do for him. Because if you got like a mild CP diagnosis, you're like, what the heck? CP, like what's going to happen? Cerebral palsy? Mild, yes, yeah, cerebral palsy. Okay. And because, and basically for this whole long story with tons of diagnostics and stuff like that, just to see what I actually had because no one knew what it was. And then all of a sudden we went through the whole process. We found out that I had cerebral palsy. We go and meet this amazing, outrageous physical therapist named Joan Molden, who basically was who basically said, if you put this child in a wheelchair, you will have an angry and frustrated child. And then the, sto and then the story came, how many times a week can you get him here to physical therapy? I was going six days a week to physical therapy, even on Saturdays. They actually fed me lunch. <laughs> That's nice. And from there, and she even said, I don't care what insurance will pay, I'll work with them, just so that I could be able to walk and do all these things yeah you know what yeah now if i don't take care of it yeah my leg muscles do get tight but i have to constantly stretch them out okay. and do all that fun stuff okay to keep my muscles moving but that's all cp because your muscles naturally it's not like for everyone else's muscles, like but they do stay loose yeah your cp muscles they want to stay tight they don't want to loosen up so they're kind of like spasming and stuff like that okay so now, years down the line, I start school. I was in early intervention in a private preschool called Building Blocks over in Comac, where I was actually going to my grandmother's a couple of days a week. Yeah. So it was actually really cool. And I'm actually still best friends with a girl that I've known since preschool. We're still like best friends. I still see her maybe not as much as I used to, but like once in a, once a year, if I'm lucky. Okay. Use of technology, you see them a lot more often. <laughs> And from there, yeah, no. And, you know, and then we went into regular school, mm -hmm. all special ed until I hit high school. Then I went into general ed. Yeah, I did struggle a little bit, but I kind of overcame it. Yeah. Because, mm -hmm. of course, my weakest area is math. It's my weakest area. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah. So from going from that, then... We get the read in Sophoma, we start Suffolk. What's Suffolk? Uh, Suffolk Community College. Oh, okay. <gasps> that's where that's where this leads up to, you know, the big guy. Okay. And through all from middle school to high school, I was in a in a sports program called Empire State Games, which is we challenged. And I had no idea it even existed. I didn't find out I got it until I was eleven or twelve years old. Okay. So it's like, okay, like I could have been doing this for since I was a little kid, I could okay. have been doing this. Mm -hmm. And when you go there, you realize that you're not alone. Because, yeah. you know, for someone who has CP, yeah, you see the, the typical person in CP that's in the wheelchair. Mm -hmm. But, like, when you go here, you see a different side of it. You see, like, okay, there's more people out there. There's, it's a bigger community. Mm -hmm. And it was actually a lot of fun to go there. Of course, I got a little bit too competitive with it. Yeah. <laughs> but believe me. It would take me forever to get into the drawer that's over there that's got all my medals in it because they're all like in a shoebox. So now everyone, hey, look what I'm even wearing. One of the Empire State Games shirts. Oh, cool. <laughs> and, that's, and that's what it was. The first night you went, you all wore the same shirt. Yeah. So 
So you could have been from different schools or different teams, but you all wore the same shirt. So in a sense, you were like one group, one big family. Oh, I love it. And this is but now going into the other side of things. That program was almost taken away from them. Oh, no. And why? to the point where Nassau County had to step in and save it for those athletes. And I love watching them go. I really do. Because to me, they're amazing. They're incredible. I mean, you have some athletes that are running 1,500 meters and they have one leg. Yeah, it's in. Yeah, Empire State Games is it's an amazing program like when i when i used to do it i was like oh my gosh i want to do that one day that's the only thing i never did i did 140 and i always smoked them i'm like seriously because again i'm six foot one and for people that are tall running's pretty easy for them i don't know why i'd love to know the reason why but now it's your legs you're like a grasshopper you're like yeah. your legs well, are it, so long it, it's also cool to eat a lot of pasta the week the week every single day of the week that week too all the carbohydrates <laughs> ah okay i know those so you did the 100 and the 400 100 and a 40 and a 40 yeah whoa and those were and those were and those were sprints they were just straight away yep yeah and then it was just a whole bunch of other like shot put you know all the other yeah. mega field stuff yeah but to me it wasn't about that it was just about having fun yeah. I mean, yeah, it was fun when I got a medal, but I'm like, you know what? Uh. Yeah. <laughs> it was about the oneness and the athletes and having fun and being in a it community. Was. It was so much, you know, like, and so many, you look at so many, and you're like, some of them are running in their own respirators and they're on, and they, but they're still able to run and be yeah. able to be on this track. Yeah. I mean, to me, I was like, seriously? But it, it took a lot more out of me. And I was like, whoa. And then through Lindenhurst, we had one of, I had one of my phys ed teachers. And this was when I was in the high school. Mm -hmm. I think this was year I graduated a year before maybe. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden she goes, she's like, Rob, how many other high school students do you think would want to go? And I'm like, I don't know. So like we started putting a list together. We actually got a lot of the high school students to go with me. And these were former classmates of mine. We're in a yeah. self-contained class because mm -hmm. they had never gone to go. I was the only one because of the PE teacher I had. She found out about it, and then she was able to get us to go. Okay. So now from there, we have, I had friends of mine that were able to go. I'm like, Rob, this is so cool. I'm like, it's a lot of fun. <sighs> and, you know, I remember, like, I'd have the same teacher that had me start all, do all that fun stuff, had actually went to me and said, Rob, like, can you be down here third period to become to get better at being at better running? I'm like, yeah, sure. So it's like two periods a day. I was out running. I was out getting trained, and I mean, I had football players actually training me just so I could be the best that I could be on that day. That's amazing. I'm gonna tell you right now, it's not a part of my life that I would ever want to give up because I loved being there. Mm -hmm. Like anytime, like when I go to Mitchell Field, I'm like. I have to be back on that track because like when you go to that place yes it was an air force base and all this fun you know back in world war ii but for an athlete from empire state camps it's a different feeling mm -hmm. it's like when you're on that track you feel like you're one you feel like you have all these athletes above people cheering you on and mm -hmm. i mean it got to even to the point where we actually where the other phys ed teacher was running it she's like rob like she would actually bring in buddies. She would actually go to, she would actually talk to classes like, okay, these people might be different than you, but become their friend, help them out with stuff. And that's how she even started her own buddy program where they, where it's basically something that's helping you go through your sports and all that stuff as you're at Empire State Camps and they're char cheering you on and stuff like that. Now, after all of that's over, then we go on to Suffolk. Okay, which is where I, college. Yeah, the college. Okay, and so I'm just to re for, just to yeah. recap really quick. So we started and you were young, you were diagnosed with CP, you were told to, yeah, you might be in a wheelchair, you overcame that, you started doing physical therapy, um, and then you were in special needs classes till like middle school, and then you went to high school, and now you were in regular classes, and then you started running. 
So now the muscles that you, that were your CP muscles are now your athletic muscles. Uh huh. Yeah. Dude. Okay. And so now we're community college and cue the. Yeah. The big guy. Yeah. The big guy. So, okay. So ba that's what I call it. Cause like, so as I'm there, yeah, I spent a little bit longer there than you're supposed to at a community college. I was kind of there maybe like for like six or eight years, maybe. I don't I remember don't offhand. Know. All I know is one of the college administrators who recently passed away, she's just like, bro, we gotta get you out of here. I'm like, yeah, thanks. <laughs> but no, but from that, in fact, she actually helped me coordinate Special Olympics itself. But she actually, between her, the Long Island, the Special Olympics New York, Long Island region staff yeah. helped coordinate this huge project to where the, the college was actually sponsoring the program. So in other words, part of the tuition fee, there's like this little thing that helps student activities. Mm -hmm. Part of that fee was going towards this massive program. But let's, before we get and get to the program, let's get to the point where the college professor was sitting next to me at the award ceremony, back to the thing that was in high school. Okay. So like we're sitting, so all of a sudden I'm in, high, I'm in college in ninth grade. You know, you know, like when I start, when I go to Suffolk. So I was going to get this phone call one day from a former college, from a former high school phys ed teacher. She's like, hey, I went and come in and speak. So I had always done, you know, years before, at the awards ceremony. And I'm like, okay, I can make an appearance. And all of a sudden I'm like, and I go to this college professor named Professor O'Connell, who I'm really, still really close to. He... He goes nuts when I write, tell him I'm going to do something. He's like, Rob, you got to send me the link so I can see it. I'm like, okay, yeah. I'll send you the link. It's good. And all of a sudden, he talks to me. He's like, what the? And we go, I do something in this class. He's like, Rob, you don't need, pe you need, you don't need paper. You just need, you need to ad lib, which means speak straight from your heart. You're not, yeah. it's not scripted. Right. And all of a sudden, I'm like, okay. And I go up there, I do my thing. And this is before I can go up and he goes and like, wow, I want you to bring something like this to Suffolk. And I'm like, what are you, how on earth am I going to bring Empire State Games to Suffolk? And we, and from there, I was like, okay. We went to, then we went back to Suffolk. Me and my friend Andrew were talking, we're like, what can we do? What can we do? And like, we're playing around with ideas in our heads and stuff like that. And all of a sudden, first year we created the whole student organization or what do they call it. And we're just like sitting there and we're talking like, what can we do? What can... So we go and meet with this guy who works in the campus activities office named Terry. Yeah, that's actually God's name. And we meet with him and he's like, I actually sent an email over to Tim Flynn. And I'm like, what the? And then it hits me and I'm like, oh, sh because the previous year, I was told by Sue Stout, the same phys ed teacher that invited me to Empire State Games, you should check out Special Olympics because it's bigger than Empire State Games and it will always go on because it's probably, and also because it was founded by Eunice Kennedy Shriver. So through there, like we're talking about it and stuff like that. Okay, this sounds like really cool. Let me look into it. It was mind boggling. Just the size of it and all that's involved with it. It was really mind boggling. So from there, we go back to Suffolk. I'm sitting, talking to Professor O'Connor. He's like, okay. Then me and Andrew walk in. This was like in December. You know, classes are widening down. Everything's dying out for the, you know, for winter recess. Then you go back in, at the end of January, yeah. which is when my birthday is. <laughs> so we're sitting and we're talking. And all of a sudden, Andrew goes, all of a sudden, we hear from Terry, like, I got an email from Tim. Tim Flynn. And I'm like, okay. So first time we try and call him, we can't get him. So I actually went back there one day over the recess. I don't remember quite what the reason was for. I think we should meet with Andrew to talk about something. And we're sitting and we're talking to Andrew about, and then we go in and Terry actually has me call him. So he has me call Tim. And me and Tim Flynn talk about it and everything. All of a sudden, we decide to host floor hockey. Okay. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen floor hockey played before or not. But basically, what it is, it's basically you just use like a stick with the thing off. And they play with something that looks like a donut. Okay. And it was actually, like I used to say to my friends, I'm like, don't upset me or I'll put you in the ring with the athletes. 
<laughs> I, did, I never did it to any of them. Yeah. But it was so much fun to watch these athletes go at each other and, you know, and they play because they're so, they're more competitive than me and you. Yeah. I, I got news for you. I bet. <laughs> I was like, okay. And just so floor hockey them, was floor hockey was like a, a the first step in champion challenge. First step with champion challenge was actually to do a whole proposal. When okay. I mean literally mean and we had so much help from people that were helping write the news stories for the program. Mm -hmm. Like you almost felt like you were a celebrity, honestly. Mm -hmm. You are, like, man. <laughs> yeah. And the program just became before we knew it, after all the publicity was done, I was like, okay, this is fun. It was fun for the first four, three, three or four years. Then I was like, okay, now I need a break. Mm. And from all the publicity, it was, and then the second year is when Professor O'Connor made me a video. And that video now means the world to me because mm. about four or five people that are in that video have since passed away. Mm. So now that like, you know, like you don't appreciate things until after it's happened. Yeah. I'm like, I wonder what is going on in that moment. Like when you walk, the first time I walked into Champion Challenge, I was 19. No, I was 20. I was 20. Because now the program is going to be 10 years old. And when I walked into Champion Challenge the first time, I was like, whoa. You know, like you're just so blown away. You're seeing, we basically were the first ones to use cool, like they're like, rings but they're all made of foam and then we put together with velcro so you know like everyone's coming in they're trying to figure out how to put circles together and stuff like that it was it was there was drama but when you saw the big payout yeah. i can't tell you the emotions of an athlete getting a gold or a silver bronze medal from you and oh years later i'm sitting there and i'm getting thanked by parents and grandparents and like what, the, what did i do yeah. But, you know, like, it was just an idea that came to my head from a college professor sitting next to me, like, Rob Newton. And then one of the directors of campus activities, Lisa Hamilton, I got, she's like, Rob, you better get used to sitting in conference rooms. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and from there, this whole thing just started to explode. I mean, to the point where the very first event, we had athletes that were coming as far away as Rochester, and which is an all the way up state like way up there athletes from all the way down to long island we were having to put them in, in the sheridan hotel wow. for for like literally for the whole and mind it this was for one weekend yeah. so literally they got to come in for a whole weekend it was so much fun i can't even begin to tell you the amount of excitement that was going on that day I mean, yeah, there's some annoyance because everyone's reaching out, oh, you got to be there like five o'clock in the morning. But of course, me and Dean Cherry, being who we were, we were heading the whole thing. Me, me and I both didn't walk in until like eight or nine o'clock in the morning. So you, you can imagine the amount of, yeah. But I mean, like now, like when I think about it now, Champion Child sorry, down in a 60,000 square foot facility. It's now in a 141,000 square foot facility. So it goes from this tiny, from this smaller facility, which was state of the art, beautiful state of the art facility to now this huge facility where it still is. And part of the reason for that was because Suffolk had changed the floor out. No one knew the kind of floor that was gonna be put in. No, nope. mm. That's another story for another time. And basically from there, it went back to Nassau, which is to me almost like, home base for me because that's where I started as an athlete at Empire State Games. Yeah. And all of this stuff just happened on its own. Like, I'm like, okay. To me, it felt like it went home. And no, I don't go out as much as to see it. I kind of like let them do their own thing. I'm like, all right, I'm ready to go out. But if I do, I only spend like two or three hours there. Then I, then I leave. I get my shout out and then I, because that's what, that's how like I feel like, you know, it's safe. No, nothing's ever going to mess with it. It's got Canon, the com Canon, the printer and camera company. They sponsor the skills area. Wow. They got a grant for it at one point where we actually have to create an inclusive health program. 
So which basically means you as a volunteer would actually get to sit with an athlete and have lunch together. Oh, I would love that. And it was like boxed lunches and stuff like that. So it was like basically one year I think they had pizza, but that was still when it was when, before we got the grant for the program. Yeah. And this, but again, that grant and all that stuff happened after I stepped down. That's my best, well, my best friend, Danielle Perry. Mm -hmm. And she's an amazing person as well. She's got a hell of a story as well, too. And Danny, I call her Danny D. I just call her Danny D. And she, I handed her because I'm like, this girl can, is like the female me. She just, she knows what's got to be done. She knows how to handle people. And she took what she had to do. And she went in. And she actually made it 10 times better than when I, when I had it. She actually had a chalk artist come in maybe like a couple of days before the event and actually draw on the sidewalk in front of the doors leading into the event, welcome athletes. Like it was so, it was such a cool event that when the athletes walked in, they were like, whoa. I mean, yeah, the first year we had it, we had NFL trainers coming in, train them, which don't be wrong. That was phenomenal. That's what, the thing about Champion Challenge was too, it was the first program that actually set standards really high in Special Olympics. It actually became like literally one of the most highest standard programs in the state of New York for Special Olympics. So it's like, okay, like what on earth did I start? Wow. It really, and when I first started, I'm like, okay, what did I do? Yeah. Because like the whole entire time, I'm like, shit. Tim would even tell you stories too. Like, I was shaking. I was actually nervous. I'm like, what on earth am I doing? I'm too young for this. Like, what am I doing? And it evolved into this huge program to the point where my name is still on it to this very day. Oh, that's great. So, so it still, it still happens that first week of November, we still yeah. have athletes that come in. Yeah, it's kind of shrunk a little bit more down in size. Which to me honestly is better because but I'm not as involved with it. And still, like if I walk into a special Olympics event, it's like and what I like about it now though too is like I can just go in as a normal person. No one knows exactly who I am, when I started, and that's what I like about it. It's like, okay, like Rob, yes, you started all their main goal is to get me to walk in as an athlete in all the gear. Don't think I'm gonna do it. No. <laughs> no. And maybe one day. <laughs> Maybe one day I might surprise them. But like what I plan on doing this year, if I'm allowed to, is I'm actually going to walk in the parade of athletes with them, probably wearing one of the Empire State Games track suits. If I'm able to, I saw, you know, I, again, like I talked to you earlier about logistics and all that stuff. I got to talk to Tim to see if I would be allowed to do it, which I'm pretty sure I will. Yeah. But the founder, you're the creator of yeah. this whole thing. So like you created yeah. it when you were at Suffolk and then, did the Special Olympics like pick it up from you basically? Special and Olympics, no special. It was a it was a whole strategic sponsor partnership. Ah. Special Olympics, yeah. Special Olympics in New York came to Suffolk and says, "Hey, we're looking to do a partnership," mm -hmm. and that's how this whole thing started. And then it became. Then they had to handle negotiations. Those I can't tell you that because I was not even there. I was You're right. I don't even remember what I was even doing. <laughs> I let them handle that stuff. So I'm like, I don't want to see that stuff. I remember just, selecting dates and just the chaos of from doing that. I'm like, I don't need to see the other stuff. Thank you. Right. <laughs> and to this very day, like, I still think it has. I'm like, I don't know how you guys put up with me. Yeah. Like, and, you know, like, I look back, I'm like, and I will say this, honestly, being at the top for so many years, it kind of made me a little paranoid. Yeah. I can understand that. And I didn't like it this much. Because, you know, like, I actually, I actually thought people were going after what I started. And then they were actually trying to take it away from me. Yeah. So it kind of, like, messed with my head a little. Yeah, I could see that for and, sure. And that's why I kind of, like, stepped away. And I was like, you know what? No, that's not for me anymore. Let yeah. someone else have, have fun with it. And stuff like that. What was your favorite thing about the Champions Challenge? Honestly? Yeah. A lot of recognition that I got from it. Because the kind of recognition it got me years later, um, it got me the recognition of Eunice Kennedy Shriver's grandson, who I'm actually still really close to to this very day. Wow. So like, it became, we actually got an email from the chairman of the board the very first time the event launched. Like he actually sent me a personal email and 
all this stuff happened from creating this program that no one had ever seen before. Yeah. To the point where he, that's, it was a record setter. You know, it was, people wanted to have that program. Like, it just, it grew like crazy. Like people were just like, whoa. What and were the like athletes I said, like? Oh, the athletes are crazy. The athletes we literally have, like they literally come down for that day and they're like, we're going to take the goal back up to New York state. We're going to become the champions again. They're so excited. Like they must oh, walk in there and just oh, like beam in, with like, excitement. Oh yeah. They can't in the video. Then the second video, we actually have a, cause we used to have this someone sing, you know, the national anthem. Yeah. We actually have a video of the athletes singing the national anthem with her. Like if that's when you like it's, and you can't hear okay. them singing it, but you can actually see them mouthing the words. And it's, yeah. That's when you like when you see that moment, yeah. that's what does it all. That's yeah. what you know, like it's worth all the heartache, it's worth all the struggle, it's worth because you gotta remember, like the year before Champion Challenge left Suffolk was when yeah. Sandy hit Long Island. Superstorm Sandy. So Champion Challenge never got to ha happen that year. So that following year when Danny D took it over and she lived up to me, I was like, holy like you know like she took on the full mantle of being my successor yeah so now it's totally out of my hands it's totally out of her hands and it's back with special olympics and they've been just taking such great care of it mm. that it's still going like craziness it's this big thing and it's you know like it's still most people still talk about it as being one of the top programs in the state of new york and being one of the largest so wow. it's still, it still goes, it's still, you know, when I walk into rooms and I'm with someone from Special Olympics in New York, language, they introduce me as Robert Peck, the founder of Special, the champion. And I'm like, I even had the college present, you know, like the big guy, the guy's in charge of the whole college. And it was not as Robert Peck as the guy who brought Special Olympics to Suffolk. So I'm like, ah. Yes, <laughs> But do you see what I mean? Like it literally became my identity. Yes. Like, you know, my own hometown. They don't know me for the other stuff that I've done. They know me for Special Olympics. Because Special yeah. Olympics is, it's got a very influential name. That's what I'm going to say. Yeah, it does. And how does it feel having that be part of you, who you are? Heartwarming. Yeah. Good. Because it makes me remember, like, when I was in Athens, Empire State Games. Yes. Because, like, being, you know, just thinking of being one day doing that 1,500 meter which I never did. I never, that was the one race I never did. I did my 100, I did my 40, but that was like my goal was one day to make that 1500. I never did it. Mm. Do I regret it? Yeah, a little, but you know, I said one day I'll get back there. One day I'm gonna get back there, I'm gonna do it again. But in a way, I think maybe that 1500 was supposed to be the goal for Champions Challenge. Yeah. Cause I look at like, okay, after all of that was done, Champion Challenge came a year later. After I walked away from Empire State Games, and yeah, a couple of years later, I went back to Empire State Games to see it, but it wasn't the same. It wasn't the same way that I remembered it. So I was like, you know what? That's what Champion Challenge became for me. It became my brand new Empire State Games. And that's how I always look at the Champion Challenge. And that's why so many of my new programs, like Champions and Friends and Champion Ability, have the champion name in it because to me that's like helping prolong what champion challenge really is mm. you know champion challenge became in a way its own legacy yes and that's what these champions of friends no longer exist unfortunately because of budget and you know all that stuff yeah and because of something else too but champion challenge it just it started it started its own movement it really when those athletes would come after it was after it was started suffolk so many special needs not that there weren't already some at suffolk i would actually hold by college administrators like rob we can't keep up because yeah. they had to make sure everything was ready to accommodate someone with special need because after champion challenge was launched so many just started coming like it became it brought the whole college together for that one weekend and all of New York State to be an athlete at Empire State 
be an athlete at a champion challenge. And like, they love, you know, like when I think about grandparents that want, they were talking to me and thanking me. And I think about parents that sit next to me, who sit next to me and like, Rob, how do we start a new program like this at Suffolk? I'm like, but that, it actually hurt me to say, because that program kind of did break the college. Because it was just, like, I'm not getting into how much it costs, but I know the program is expensive to, to host. I know yeah. it, it was an expensive program to host. I know there was a lot that went on behind the scenes, stuff that I never want to know. I don't want to see it. And when I still did walk, every time I walk into a room, I'd still go back to that room. After Champion Challenge left, after I had graduated, I would still return to the field house just to do one walk around that room just to refill Champion Challenge and when it started that 10 years ago. You know, in November of this year, it'll be 10 years old. So it's like, okay, like what's next for me? Who knows? You know, like yeah. Champions of Friends was an incredible program as well. Yeah. But that's all started again. What Champion Challenge taught me. It was, just, it was, I know now I feel like I'm getting ahead of my, but that's what Champion Challenge did. It started its own movement. You know, yeah. like even here on Lindy, like I would actually get asked by special needs and it's like, Rob, like where do you go when you're not here? Where, do you, where are you when you're not here? And I'm like, I'm at school. I'm at, because I was a college student at the time. I could only be up, up at Lindenhurst one day a week. That's all I could give them. I mean, sometimes I try like two or three days and it's just, it became too much. Yeah. And I got myself into a little bit of trouble. So it wasn't worth me being up there that much. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, like, but from me doing that and just what Champion Challenge taught, is it's all about inclusion. It's all about being unified. And mm -hmm. we'd have we'd have people out in the hallways high fiving the athletes as they'd come walking into the event. We'd have we'd have athletes that came in as unified. They yeah. knew the whole entire room was decorated with posters just for the athletes. Yeah. And you talk about a movement. That's what special interest is all about. It's all about being unified and being included. <sighs> and it shows them, even like through all the stuff they go through on a daily basis, yeah. they're all in it together. They're all one. They're all one group. And it's amazing. It's, it, may, it kind of takes your breath away. It, it does. It really, really does. It does. Oneness. I, I love that you mentioned what did, con um, con I, I say conscious mm -hmm. champion because I have a conscious champion group. Now I'm all together. <laughs> Maybe I'll bring yeah, that to the yeah. Special Olympics. Who knows, right? Um, I was going to ask you if there was a lesson that uh, Champions Challenge taught you, what would it be? Mm -hmm. And I think you answered it with unity, but is there anything else that other than unity Just and oneness? Just never give up on what you want, even if, because like, one of the things with Champions Challenge is was just so hard getting used to managing everything like being in meetings and the not fun stuff of it right. and it actually showed you like hey listen you have to give things up in life if you want that end result mm -hmm. you can't have it all and that's what champion challenge taught me is like you have to give up some things in your life in order to go for it yeah. and that's exactly what champion challenge taught me is you have to go for your end goal and did I set out to build the top program? No, but that's but it came because of the team that I built with it. And, and your spirit, it, like exactly. Your, and your it's my spirit. passion. And oh. It's my passion. And even like when I worked with Ch Professor O'Connell, he let me, he guided me, but he also helped me too. He guided me and he helped me. He's like, Rob, just watch. How do you? He taught me one thing, and I he's gonna he'll probably yell at me if he doesn't mention this. <laughs> Learn how to use people in a positive way. <laughs> And that's like what he taught me. And I'm like, okay. And I'm going to still say this honestly. I kind of still do suck at it. Because <laughs> it's a very, it's a hard concept to learn. Yeah. When you think about using people, you think about it in a negative way. Mm -hmm. That's not the way he got me to think. It was like, learn how to use them in a positive way. And that's what, learn how to make people work for you. Right. And that's what happened with Champion Challenges. I learned how to make committee members work for me in order to build my dream at Suffolk mm -hmm. and that's what it became it became my dream like every time like and then it kind of came fun like after I gave it all up I could kind of like mess with people like 
you know, because they would hear the stories about the program. They would hear the stories of Champion Challenge. And they're like, is he, you know, like it would make you feel like, is the Champion Challenge, is the founder of Champion Challenge real? It's like, is he like an actual real person or is he just made up? Yeah. And I'd actually appeal it. And once I found out, like, who I was, it was like, okay, like, he does really exist. So kind of like I, so kind of like I went from this big celebrity almost to now being kind of like, like a ghost. I kind of liked that better. Yeah. <laughs> I really did. I liked it. So like, you know what I mean? I almost felt like I was almost like a real James Bond in a way. Like, no one knew who I was. No one, I mean, yeah, I was so all dressed up. I'd wear a suit every day to cop. And, like, this is, like, basically, like, casual for me. And that's, like, literally, like, how people would see me. Yeah. They'd be, like, whoa, like, who is that? And then, like, I'd tell them, and I'm, like, that's you? And I'm, like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> and that the things I was known for when I was walking around at Suffolk were my Western boots, my cowboy boots, and my long black coat. And the suit. So that's what I, that's what I was known for. Wow. Yeah. Wow, I can picture it. That's amazing. I love your story so much. And I I would love to go to a Champions Challenge one day and just definitely, see everything. Like, I want to be a part or something. I want to go to the Special Olympics and I don't know, like, just do you know something. What? Even if I just like, volunteer here's what and hand tell out you right water. Now to do. We'll yeah. get Special Olympics in Colorado. Okay. I know they're a big thing. I know they have them in Colorado. Get as many people as you want to go with you. Okay. Like, create your own team and just go in there and cheer on the athletes become their friend and you know what also reach out to your local special olympics too and talk to them and be like how can i get involved with you what can i do with you in order to help get more people to become included like how do i feel them to not feel alone how do i feel them not to be segregated how, or secluded you know you bring them in you show them like okay like you know i had one athlete Ooh, man, he loved, one of the things I've also learned too is it's very female oriented. Like I would have a lot of girls that would want to become, and become help out with Special Olympics. They just, they just fell in love with it. And of course you have, you have athletes that don't, and they would, they would just fall over them. Like they loved hanging out with them. And yeah. we would do beanbag tosses with them and, and this is how I introduced anyone that I started working with at Suffolk. I would take them to a spring games North or a spring games South. I'd be like, you have to do, if you want to do what I do with, at the big level with champion shouts, you have to learn how to socialize with the athletes. You have to learn how to be their friends. And then we can go from there. Yeah. And it's, literally if you want to learn about friendship and love and unconditional love and people overcoming their strengths and weaknesses go to an event hang out with them and really learn who they are because i'm going to tell you right now you're going to learn more about who you are as a person when you go and visit them at an, at an event or at a game because mm. that's little and they literally because of COVID 19 they've had everything taken away from them right now so they're really not feeling, you know, they're scared. They're nervous. Yeah. So like right now, what me and Tim Schreiber were talking about one day, he says like, how about doing letters for champions? Where we have like letters written to, where we'd have unified partners actually write to their, to an athlete that they're on a team with, just so they didn't feel alone. Uh, That's a future. Yeah. yeah. Can we create some sort of like pen pal? Like, if how do we? That, if you want to do it, you're more than welcome to. You're okay. more than welcome to. Because this is what I mean. Like, for them right now, they go through so much on a daily basis. You know, there a lot of them are in group homes. Mm -hmm. So they're not even with their families right now. Or if they are with their families, they're all with the families. If they're able to. You know, I don't know the specifics on that part. But they really look, when I, can, I can't even tell you that. And when they go, even at UCK, which they literally, like I get calls from Rachel last week, she's like, Rob, like, they miss you. Like they get so excited, like same as like kind of things like this. They go nuts, it's like they can, 
we get phone calls. They're like, Rob, like, when are you going to come up and hang out with them? When are you going to come and see them? When are you, because like, I have these two wonderful clients up there that are very close to me named Shawnee and Anthony. And Shawnee, the first time he met me, he wanted to go home with me. Yeah. And I'm like, no, you can't. You, you can't. <laughs> it's like, you can't go. At first of all, my, my house isn't even wheelchair accessible. I got news for you. It's not even wheelchair accessible. It's all steps. And, you know, and like I used to say, like, well, like when I look at them, like they're teaching me so much more about them. Like every time they see me, they always want to talk to me. I'm like, you know, like I'm usually in a rush. Yeah. Same way I was at Suffolk. Because usually I'm bringing in, because the thing about the whole music program, we bring in people from my church. So we have a whole choir group that comes in and sings with them. So that that's a whole nother thing too. Then that happened right before Special Olympics even started at UCP. Oh, wow. So explain like UCP. What is this? Uh, UCP, this is another place. Yeah, UCP, what UCP is, it's more like they have and children's learning. It's more like basically a school setting for all special needs. Okay. There's not a lot from the community. On occasion, I have community members come in and help out with stuff like therapy dogs. <laughs> They've had a couple of therapy dogs come in. And guess who gets more attention? The person who brings in the dog, the person or the dog? The dog. The dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would be there too. <laughs> that's, that, that's exactly how I would be too. <laughs> I would say it all the time. And, you know, and even like that too, like he says, that's what it is. They when you go into these places, like the first time I went into UCP, I'm not even gonna lie, I did feel bad for a lot of them. Yeah. Like it actually took a lot out of me to not hold back tears. Cause like it caused me to think like, whoa, I'm able to use my legs. I'm able to use my arms. I'm able to talk about a speech impediment. And I think graduate from college, I was able to do all these things. Now they are back, but like it taught me so much more because so many of those athletes struggle, but you know, they don't let anything stop them. Like literally you don't, I, there's this amazing boy named Johnny who started this whole art program. Like literally he started this whole entire art program. Like, and, and they call it Johnny's way. And he could, so, you know, he wanted, he wanted to paint with his friends. He didn't, he was so gifted in art and he wanted to paint with his friends. So now he's painted this, they've all created these amazing programs of these amazing art pieces from the Brushstrokes program. To the point now for their Life Without Limits gala, they select one of, the, one of their clients paintings for the invitation. Love that. So it's, and they do an artist of the month where they literally put all pictures of that this artist has done. Yeah. So it's like, and with Rachel's amazing group, she's got people that can sing incredible. Wow. And she's got to perform, one of her performers has recently passed away. And like, he was gifted, like amazing, like, like you could do Prince. Wow. Like literally like Prince to the whole, they have another athlete named Chi Chi who can, <laughs> That's only the guy's name, and I love it. I'm, I love a, it. He's such a ham. Yeah. And um, he actually can break dance phenomenally. Wow. He, they, <laughs> they literally, you know. It sounds like a magical place, my friend. People are singing to the like cra with crazy talent. They're painting with crazy talent. Yep. There's athletes. There's, like that's this what is UCP magic. Is, is it's such? I used to say it to Kathy all the time. Like when you walk in here, there's a spirit. Spirit. I don't I don't know I don't know what kind of spirit it is. I'd love to know what it is. But when you walk into UCP, it's very family oriented. Like you can tell like everyone's there to support one another. Yeah. Like if some of them are having a bad day, they go find Rachel <laughs> and like they know Rachel's gonna get them out of a bad day. Yeah. Like if we're like if someone else is struggling, they go and find someone that they're close to. Yeah. Like when they lose someone. UCP comes together and holds a service for them at the center. Wow. It's a very big family Love. oriented place. And you know, and listen, 
they do come, they're probably one of the most amazing motivational organizations I've ever been a part of. Like, yes, I love Special Olympics. I still do to this very day. But there's such a a heart and soul at Special Olympics at UCP that you can't replicate it. You can't replicate every any place in the world. Like when you walk into this facility, it's incredible. I I don't even have words for it because I look at the artwork and I'm like to think. And I'm gonna tell you right, some of that artwork goes for a lot of money. They actually sell some of it. I'm, I was at an event and I was like, whoa, like they, it goes for a good amount of money and yeah. I'm so happy for them because, and that's another one too in Colorado or any place, like get involved with them because they do a lot of really cool stuff. Um, They also do a 5k walking wheel. Yeah. I did it once. I'm not allowed to do it anymore. Why? Because of what it did to my legs. My legs oh. are gotten so tore, so tight that I actually both did disc in my lower back. <laughs> yeah because i'm the kind of person if you don't say no to me i'll just keep on doing and doing and doing even if i'm in a lot of pain not thinking about what it will do to my lower back yeah and i kind of came home that day and i kind of said to my mom do you have anything hot i can put on my back to relax it yeah and that and then i had to go take a hot bath because it was the only way i could actually relax my whole lower back because i was in and lucky this year i've not had a flare-up at all because I've had, you know, I've had is, you know, like right now, something that happened in my Star Champion Challenge was part of my neck started an hour. So, like right up here, my cervical spine actually, we found out I had central, central canal stenosis, which basically means part of your spine is narrowing. Mm -hmm. So, basically, in other words, what's happening is right now, there's almost no liquid on one side of my spine. Uh. So like coming from all that, I'm like, great. So, but I never let it stop me. I'm like, all right. Cause the thing is with everything is you have to stay active. You have to keep your body moving or even with CP, it's going to get worse. If you don't, depending on the kind of CP you have, cause there's so many, there's so many different levels. There's so many different things. Yeah. And that's what I learned. Like I have to, I don't have a choice. I have to keep moving. I have to use a massager. I have to stretch. I have to do or my body's will. Yeah. What do you, so tight. what do you do now to, to keep everything moving and to keep yourself Believe active? Or not, yoga? Okay. Special Olympics is coming in right now again, too. Okay. They just launched this program called School of Strength. It's virtual. You, you can actually watch it on YouTube. Okay. You School of Strength. Watch it on YouTube. School of Strength. And they okay. actually have Becky Lynch teaching stuff. The WWE star. Cool. You have, to, you have to watch. I mean, they, yeah, they have one guy that's a little nerdy, but he tries to teach them, and it's, it's hilarious. <laughs> but like, they do all different levels. So I'm like, all right, let me look at how they do a lot of their warm up stuff, because that's basically what I can do for me without hurting myself. Because then, and that's what I actually do every morning, because it helps me to focus on that Good. and just to see where that could go. Because right now, listen, even with the low muscle tone, you're never going to see the six pack of abs on me or anything like that. Because again, with the low muscle tone, but even like one of my other friends named Jeannie, who used to do a lot of walking with me, used to do a lot of warm ups with me. Yeah. Um, and she recently also got her personal training certificate too. Um, she actually, what was it? I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but she even would have me do we do walks like almost like two miles a day and we'd actually do it by using facetime to motivate each other we would actually facetime each other or we'd video chat each other just to help us get through our walks i love it she was in a, she's probably still one of the most amazing one that i've done a lot of really cool stuff with and she's one of the clients too she really like my mom she's a she really is she's an incredible woman and she's also helped out too with a lot of just like okay i mean she's seen me at my worst where like part of my leg part of my body doesn't want to work she's seen where my hip actually locked on me so she's seen all that so i'm like no i'm not gonna she's done swimming exercises with me and stuff like that 
but she's an amazing, also another amazing person that I've worked with too. Wow. And so, what? Mm -hmm. Oh, go ahead. And also part of it is just who you surround yourself with too. If they're going to hold you back, get rid of them. Get rid of them. Like you got to go for the people that are going to push you to go to that next level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I love your, so, and before we got on the call, I remember us talking about, like, it would be awesome to get UCP some more notoriety and some more attention because yeah. Special Olympics kind of, they take the brunt of the special, like, needs type yeah. of athletics, but UCP maybe, and, and UCP is around the world, I'm guessing. No, UCP is only national. It's only national. Okay, so it's just yeah, in so our nation. Yeah, they're basically all throughout the U.S. Okay. And Special so, Olympics is the big guy, yeah. What would be ways that we could go and get more involved with UCP, no matter what state Basically, we're in? Basically, find out if you could be a volunteer. Yeah. Like, just start at the bottom. Become a volunteer and look like, okay, okay like, even if it's like, you got to help them bring in athletes. Or even, now I'm calling them athletes. <laughs> yeah. But even if, like, you bring them in off their buses every morning. Yeah. Or you help put them on the buses in the afternoon. Or if you even go out there and hang out with them for, like, a couple hours. Like, they love that stuff. Like, you know, if you go and spend, like, a weekend with them at their group home. Yeah. Anything. Like, That's I've tough. done programs where we've brought in, again, people from my church just to do our projects with them. Yeah. And they love, they love the human interaction. I bet. And that's what's so important with smaller nonprofits is the more human interaction you can bring in for them, the bigger they're going to get, the bigger, the more help they're going to receive. Right. And again, it's just like reaching out to you, helping people come in to these group homes and into, like with UCP, they do a 5K walking that I was just telling you about. And that is an amazing program as well, too. Yeah. It's a fundraiser. Even help out with their fundraisers. Like a lot of them do very, everyone, every organization does a different fundraiser. Like UCP does their 5K walking wheel. They do their Monte Carlo. They do their golf events. They do a psychic reading. Oh, that's, that's up my alley. <laughs> I know. They do a handbag bingo. Oh. These are the ones on Long Island. I don't know what a lot of the other, I think, I know CP Nassau does, I think, a polar bear plunge, which basically, basically you could dress up in any costume you want and you jump into freezing cold water yeah it's a it takes a lot of bravery i don't do that <laughs> yeah. i've seen people that i'm like you're nuts yeah um the other ones that usually do i mean there's something for everyone yeah like if you so want to really, do the what so really what i'm hearing from you is like just to go spend time and energy there. Like, it's not about money. Yeah. It's not about like yeah. what you can do, what you can bring. Like they sometimes just want someone to sit and have lunch with and talk to or color with. Yeah. Like it doesn't have to be, you know, it's not even, it's, it's, it doesn't even sound like it's a fundraiser for money. Like I'm sure that money would be helpful, but it's like, <laughs> yeah. like your time and energy and the effort of just wanting to go over there and like hang out with them. That's all they really want. I mean, like, that's all. And you'd be surprised at how many of them actually become like your really close personal friends. Like, I'm sure, some, dude. <laughs> and even like they can't talk to you, realize it in the smiles in their faces and the smiles. In their eyes. I'm sure their exactly. eyes say and so much. And that's what they do. They give you a different look on life. Spirit. That you're not going to realize. Like some of them have stories that I can't even imagine. Yeah. And some of them, like, they see someone walking in, like, they see me and I'm talking to someone, it's like, oh, they got to say hi to me. Just, I'm like, all right. <laughs> yeah. This is what it's all, and that's what I mean, like, and that's what helps these organizations out, you know, and that's what's going to help more of them feel more included into society, like, not excluded anymore, not secluded. Right. Like, they want to be included. They want to become your friend they want to become like your family member and that's one of the things that i always stress like whenever i go into ucp like i have people that maybe aren't as comfortable with special needs or anyone that's different for that matter 
But when you go into this place, it's not about that. Like you include them in what you're doing. Look at the art, look at their artwork and think about like, how much, how long did it take them to paint that? How long did it take them to make that art piece? And you said sometimes they're painting with their mouth or with their, yeah. or something they different, actually, right? It, you know, it's, what Rachel actually does is all of their equipment has to be specially made for them. And some of the equipment can't even be bought or if it can't, it's super, super expensive. Um, so what they do is they actually take common things and actually develop them as tools that they can use to paint. So it's really, you know, it's really incredible what they, the way their minds work. <laughs> And this is like what I say, I'm like, go to these places, you're gonna find out more and more about who you are as a person. Like, even for like someone just to walk around in their facilities for like five minutes, like to get a tour. Yeah. That's how you're gonna learn about them. That's how you're gonna see it from their point of view. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of them are doing, a lot of them may just be sitting there, but again, but they're listening to music because that's something that they're into. And so it helps them therapeutically. As long as you can relate to something that you want to do therapeutically, you can go into one of these facilities. Like if you, like with you with the yoga, that's a great thing that they have athletes that are more able-bodied. Yeah. They can do yoga they, and it will help relax them. Like that's the way it is. Like as long as they can understand what they have to do, they're going to be great, you know, and they're going to have the DSPs, which to me, they're like the unsung heroes of the nonprofit world. Of what any is of a these DSP? Direct support professional. Okay. They're like, they really, really are. Um, they're, they're basically like, even like right now, they're like your unsung healthcare worker. Cause they're basically doing, they're on the bottom of everything. They're right there with the athlete and, or the client. And when one of these clients does pass away, actually they feel it because it's like a part of their family. Yeah. So, and they help them out so much. The supervisors work with them. Anyone, when you go into any of these kinds of facilities, go into the back. Don't hang out in the offices where everyone else is in the front. You go into the back, you see what it's all about. You see the people. And when I walk through UCP, like, yeah, I do spend some time in the front, but like, if I don't have to be in the front, you'll find me in the back. Yeah. And sometimes I'm actually, instead of participating, I'm going to be completely honest right now, I do kind of sit and watch because you want to observe everything. You want to watch over everything that's going on and see their reactions. Instead of participating with me, you want to be able to observe them and watch their reaction, how they're reacting to, say, that ring that was given to them. Or, you know, like, I can't tell you, like, we would give some of the athletes, some of the clients gifts, and they'd be like, oh, they're not going to let us take that away from them for two weeks. Because that little present mm -hmm. means so much to them. Like, it means, like, it's their whole world. Mm -hmm. That little object that we may take for granted is their whole world. Like, and that's what it's all about. It's like when you find ways you can relate to them, it can be just a tiny little thing. Like if you were to go volunteer to UCP, like, yeah, that'd be great. But like, think about like, okay, how am I gonna volunteer with them? How am I gonna help them? You find that one little cord. It could be giving them something or it could be volunteering in the most easiest of ways. It could become becoming a DSP. It could become something so simple, but yet so big for them because they're getting another friend. They're getting another family member. Now, not all organizations are gonna be like UCP of Long Island or Special Olympics. Not all of them are gonna be that way, but most of them are. Like, you think about the oldest special needs organization in the country is Easter Seals which is basically the grandfather of all of these little ones, of the, all the other And Easter Seals is an incredible organization too. It's over a hundred years old. It's going to be a hundred years old in July. Wow. I've never heard of that. 
look them up too. It's the same exact thing that we're talking about right now with special needs. Well, see what I mean? Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. And there are another one you could volunteer with. There's tons of them out there. It's just that not all of them get all the publicity. Right. And right. Easter Seals is a little bit bigger than that UCP, but again, Easter Seals is the same kind of thing where they'd love to have a volunteer. They'd love to have someone, and you would see them. They're walking with their walkers and all they want to be able to do is walk and run and feel the wind in their face or smell the sea air when they go on a boat. So for them, if we're able to give them a better sense of who they can become by giving them an unconditional friendship or not treating them any differently, that's what's going to make them feel loved and accepted. And right now they need it most of all because you know, like, yeah, we're all scared because of this crazy virus, yeah. but they're feeling it the worst because they're being secluded. They're being, you know, they can't, they don't understand the reason why they can't go to their, their program or they can't go to their school or they can't go and see people that they really want to be with or go to their favorite place. They can't, do, they don't understand it. So like right now, what they're experiencing is a lot more tough for us because at least we understand we can't go out there. Yeah. But for them, this is that this is like a day in their life. Yeah. Yeah. So that's like what I'm hoping for all of them is that they're gonna get to become is that they'll get to become more included after all this is over. Is they're gonna feel friendship, they're gonna feel love, they're gonna feel kindness. I mean, a lot of them do, but you still have some people that'll be a little nasty. And that's what it's all about with these organizations is they need, is, and it's the same thing with all of them. They all somehow interconnect. Yeah. It's really, that's why I always say to feel like, go into UCP, go into Special Olympics, go into free, go into Best Buddies, and you're, and best buddies act for you become friends with, with one client, with one person with a special need. Okay. So that might be a little bit easier. Like, okay, like you'll be paired up with someone. So you actually become like best friends with this one person yeah. and get invited to that. And you actually, oh, wow, this is actually my best buddy. So I like saying he's my best friend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like, and that's how it is with a lot of them. Like, believe they still, they have their, they had some clients actually hang out with their with their day have people that they actually go out to events they go to movies together they go to shows together they go it's incredible but again this is stuff that we don't see often we don't hear about it like i was so happy about two or three years ago yeah it was um you see two clients two students i'd worked with at Lindenhurst actually came prom king and queen at their senior prom and they blew out the popular kids. They actually won over the popular kids. <laughs> yeah. And that was the That's that was amazing. the year after champ that was the year after Champion Challenge after Champions Friends. Champions and Friends had done so much for them too. They actually got included. They got included in the yearbook. Yeah. That's just more than just their school photos. They actually got to have their class photos from that after school program included in their yearbook. They got their own bulletin board that everyone walked by where they could, they could show their artwork and everything. And like when we were doing the presentations with like the Special Olympics and Best Buddies, where we were looking to bring them into Lindenhurst, we actually brought them back to show just what our clients were able to do. Wow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, gosh, my heart. I know. It's, it's a lot to take in. I know. It's like what I'm feeling is that like they literally just want to be seen and want to be included and they don't want to yeah. be different and they just want kindness. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That's all they want. That's all they want. Like to them, I was the most coolest person in the world. So I would come in and spend a day with them. I'd come in and spend a couple of hours with them. You see like, them. Like you see yeah, them exactly. for who they are. In, I would back when I was in general ed in high school. This yeah. is really before I even started doing any of this. I would actually, one of the life skills teachers would actually go, it's just like, Rob, like, when are you coming back? Like, they want you to come back 
Because what I would do is, yeah, like I'd be teaching them, I'd be working with them, but I'd act like bend down. Like you've seen teachers do that, like where they like bend their knees down to the desk to work with the student. Yeah. That's what I would do with them. Like I'm not going to sit, I'm not going to walk up and walk around at a higher level. No, I'm going to yeah. bend my knees, I'm going to get on your level. Yeah. And that's what it did for a lot of them. Like I'd actually be, some life school students would actually be like, when are you coming back to teach us? When are you coming back to hang out with us? When are you coming yeah. back to do this with us? Yeah. And that's, like, I'd be asked by teachers, like, how did you know they had a special need? I'm like, I just know. Yeah. Not by visual, just you can tell from their Intuitively. presence. Yeah. And I don't see them as any different. Like, like oh, we want them to see them. Instead of just, no. They are like a normal person. Yeah. Like, yes, if they have, if they can't vocalize with you, that's just their way of talking. If they're screaming, if they're yelling, that's just their way of talking. Yeah. That's why you, you know, it's fine. Like we have one of the one of the also one of the licenses she works with someone severely autistic, and she can't talk. But like when you feel the amount of love she has, and what's funny is, see, and that's what I like a lot of people is it a lot of these app clients that can't talk, they don't realize they can't, they don't know how strong they are. So for us, we know our strength, and they don't know how strong they are because they can't vocalize. So if they have something going on with them, they can't vocalize to their parents or their, to their caregiver. Oh, I have this going on. Oh, I have that going on. So they have to learn to be the spokesperson or the mouthpiece for them. And that's why it's incredible. Like when I see one that can learn sign language or can, or talk, they're learning how to read lips. I knew, I knew of a client, a student at Suffolk, what was this? This is the year right we started Champion Challenge. She was hearing impaired. She was deaf. She wanted to become a veterinarian. So what her parents did is they taught her how to read lips. And she graduated from Stony Brook. And then she ended up at Suffolk. And I, don't, I have no idea what happened to her. I'm, I'm assuming she's still going pretty well. So going from that point of view, you can now use, you know what I mean? Like, that's what I mean. It's okay, it's not just what your parents put into it, it's like what you put into yourself. And she went for it. She knew how to stand on her own two feet and she just went for it. I've seen amazing things. I've seen people that dwell on it and you can't dwell on what you can't do. You can't dwell on that. Just focus on what you can do and focus yep. on and getting that better. That a lot of them do. And yeah. you know, like when so many, and what I always love about Monte Carlo, is every Monte time I Carlo. go, Monte Carlo is a big fundraiser for UCP. Okay. Where there's a lot of expensive sports cars and oh. gambling with funny money. And yeah. I gotta That's wait until July for it this year. I'm supposed to be in two weeks from now, but I gotta wait until July. July yeah. what? 22nd. Okay. My, my birthday is July 18th. Okay. It'd be a fun birthday party. <laughs> it would be, right? It would. And it's it's a fun, but one of the things that I love is the clients are there. Yeah. Some of the clients from USCP are actually at the event. So they're actually mingling with these people that sponsor, sponsor them or fundraise for them. So they're with everyone. And, you know, like it, it's kind of, the first time I ever went, I was invited by the direct one of the directors, and I was like, "Whoa!" Like it. And then champion, and this was after champion challenge with champions and friends, where I was like, "Okay, like what am I gonna do now?" Like I tried to reinvent myself, I tried to run, didn't work out too good. <laughs> didn't work out too good. Ch champion challenge specialist ended up finding me anyway. <laughs> I couldn't get away. You just have so much heart, though, and so much soul into this yeah. whole, no matter what program, like, you do, it's just you bring your heart and your soul yeah. into it, and that's why, you know, people yeah, want you, you back. Bring me up to most people that are involved with these organizations, they're like, we love him. Yeah. Like, it's how authentic you are. Like, you, That's it. One one of the things is, like, a lot of, like, people say, oh, there's a totally different side. Yeah, there is a side for me. Like, when I'm struggling... That's one thing I don't like when people see that side. You know, like how you guys always ask me, like, okay, where I'm like, what's, what's the other side of Rob like? He's a side I don't want people to see, because like to me, 
when I look at athletes, either from Empire State Games or Special Olympics or even at UCP, because I don't want them to see the side of me like when I'm in so much pain, I can't move or I'm struggling. I don't want them to see that side of me. So it's like, how do I stop them from seeing that side of me? So that's like, I've only, I've, I've actually learned like, okay, like, don't do too much. You know, I mean, this place so I can observe how I'm living. Yeah. But it's like, okay, like you have to, let, so now I'm starting to learn now is maybe to start letting them see me for who I am. Yes. So I, I got to get used yes. to that. Not because I mean, like I have friends that, oh, Rob, I had such high hopes for me. I'm like, yeah, if you knew me now, I don't know if you'd still want those high hopes for me. Oh. But no, but like when I, but when I think about everything I've done, like either Special Olympics or, you know, yeah, Champion Challenge is still the crown, the crown jewel of like the dime, like the Kohenor diamond or some like a big diamond. Yeah. That's what Champion Challenge is. And I say it every day, I will never replicate that program. I will, because it's in a, and I always say like, oh, Champions ability, champion ability is going to be the one that's going to rival it. No. It will in its own way. Right. But it's such a, and again, they're both involved with special Olympics, but, and, but this one is more small scale. It's yeah. very, but again, it's the lessons that are there. The lessons. Like they see, they don't, they'd rather hang out with me and have fun than be an athlete. And I'm like, <laughs> come on. Like, and they look forward to it. Like every, we, when we started the program, I think last year in June, mm -hmm. they played until 4.30. They started at 12.30 in the afternoon. They went all the way until four o'clock because they didn't want to stop playing yeah. volleyball. They didn't want to stop because it gave them something to do. And Champions Abilities, this is the, the sporting UCP event that's at UCP. So yeah, it's still like is, a, okay. So yeah. like an, an athletic competition, but it's at UCP now instead and of Special really Olympics. really no competition at all because we really, a lot of these athletes, they can't, they won't be able to be on a competitive level. It's just playing. It's just like, it's, just it's, sports. It's, it's exactly what it is. And okay. You know what, honestly, I kind of, I'm not going to, I'm not big for competition now. Good. I was never, I mean, don't worry, a little competition is good. Right. But a lot of competition, no. Nah. Ruins it, yeah. Competition with a nasty, negative person. And I've seen people how they get with, I'm like, uh -uh, that's not for me. Good. And like, I love when I, and I'm going to say, yeah. The only time I was competitive in my life when I was, when I was an Empire State Games athlete. Only time in my life I was competitive. But then again, that was a different story. Right. <laughs> you know, and now, and now, you know, and now I'm like, all right. But I mean, like I say, stress anyone. You want to see the stuff that I do? <laughs> yeah, champion abilities is nice, but you got to experience champion challenge. Champion challenge is really the crown and glory. That's the one that started everything. Yeah. Like when you go into champion challenge, either you saw it from that very first program, or you see it until now when it's in its tenth year. It's still the same exact one. It's just it's evolved. It's changed. It's like it's like the preliminary event for an athlete to test their skill, to see if they have what it took, to see if they have what it takes. It's, they, so many athletes aim to win the champion challenge. Like they don't care if they're going to get a goal, any medal. Yeah. The goal is they're there yeah. and they have to participate. Yeah. And like they always say, it's like, like that thing was said, always said, like if you can't win, but if you try your best, like the gladiators that they saw in Rome, that's their oath. That saying from the gladiators in Rome at the Colosseum is their oath. Mm. So like, and that's what is constantly being said is you become an athlete. You become, and like I will say this every day, you become what you want to be when you walk into special Olympics or UCP or DDI or any of these programs, you become what you want to become. And you can be an amazing voice for them you can even use your own story to help inspire people at ucp like if you have a crazy story like i've heard stories of people that have recovered completely recovered from broken backs wow and like that's 
but there's so many things at UCP that can be learned and these other organizations. We, we just got to open those doors and yeah. walk through. Yeah. And again, we're the only ones that can unlock those doors. Because, you know, like I used, until you can put the right people in place, your door is never going to be unlocked. And that's the way it is for so many of them. Yeah. Is they want to be, they want to be our friends. And that's the biggest thing about it. They want to be included. They want to feel like they're cared about, not like that they're just a number, not like that they're just someone with a disability. It's not who they are. What I would rather call them are someone with special abilities. Yeah. Not special needs, not disabilities, abilities, because they are incredible. They all have their own special abilities. Some of them, I wish I knew how their senses work, because it almost is like when one sense died off or it didn't work fully they became a stronger person in that other sense. It's crazy. I don't know how it works. I'd love to know how it works. But they, some of them have stories that I'm like, whoa, like, and then they wait to go to UCP and they become an amazing friend. Yeah. They become an amazing friend, like Champion, you know, yes, Champions Friends is a great program. It inspired a lot of people, but it wasn't, it wasn't all the kinks were mm -hmm. weren't ironed out with it. Okay. It was a, it had great bones. It could have been what I used to call it was the preliminary for Unified Champion High School, which is a new Special Olympics program, yeah. which is all about this whole thing about unified and being included in a school setting, which is what Champions and Friends was. And I passed it. I'm like, geez, I was kind of doing that before. Here's the stuff that I've done. I've been doing it before they even started doing it. I'm like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. So, but now that, oh. so what's next? Like, so I know, so it's so personally for you, you said you want to start showing people more of who you are, like, like yeah. all sides of Rob. I think oh, yeah. that would be wonderful. And do you know how inspiring that is? Like when people can see you on that, on their level, like something that they deal with every, you know, and then yeah. they can see you at how you like to present yourself. Like when they can see both sides of you, I think yeah. they're going to be like, oh my God, I can do anything because Rob can do it. Yeah. I've had, I used to do this program with JC. JCC. It's like a Jewish center. Mm -hmm. And again, talking about special needs groups, we were actually in talk with the they're like, they look up to him. Yeah. They want to be him. And I'm like, eh, I don't know if you really want to be me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but like for all of them, you know, a lot of them that come from these sheltered walks. You know how my parents went out, they just never told me I had a disability. They just let me be a regular person. And I'm not saying I'm not. But that's like how I think you have to almost go about it. You know, totally. is you have to let them be. You no, know, I understand if they're like medically fragile or if they're immune compromised, you can't. I understand that totally. That's the downside to it, unfortunately, is high functioning and mild. You're going to see, you, you see them but they're hidden because you know they're doing things that are on a totally different level but if you have something that's moderate or severe you see it a lot more and you're like okay like how do i be friends how do i become and that's where it's like okay like i really have to become their colleague yeah. or their friend i really have to include them into what i'm doing and that's what it's all about like they evil. want Yep. They really, really do. And I look at it all and I'm like, what the heck was I doing all those years ago? <laughs> I still say it. But, you know, like I almost wish at some point in my life I would have been like, okay, let me just walk away from this a little bit more and let someone else handle a lot more of it. Because even like through stuff, like I would, I kind of, that first year when I gave it up, I kind of missed it a little bit. Like I kind of still interact a little bit too much more than I should have. But I was like, mm. 
because I did miss it. And, you know, and then I also had other people tell me like, oh, they're messing things up. Or I'm like, you know what? Mm. But again, but that's, all, but that's also like any person, you overthink things. And overthinking was my, not my great, greatest aspect because I do overthink things way too much. And that's why I was so much more happy when we brought in that's why I was like so much happy. Like once it was gone from Suffolk, I could let someone else take it over. I didn't have to. And Special Mix ran it. They coordinated one year, then they went to, I think, Lions Club or the Eagles. And it was one of those bigger, and then they got to organize it. So it wasn't really a student run thing. It became letting other people get involved with championship. Now the other two will never be like that, but you know, that's the beauty of champion challenges. It still functions, you know, maybe not the way I would have wanted it to be, but <laughs> I kind of, I kind of enjoy being here a lot more than I think I say to people because I come and go and I make my appearances. Yeah. <laughs> that's all you need to do. That's, you get to do that. Now you paid your dues, you get your royalties. Now you just show up when yeah. you want and just, just be loved. That's it. Just yeah, be there for know. the athletes. Yeah, man. Yeah. So do you have, so I, and I, I know it's only going to be a short time before something else comes from you oh, in this arena, but I think it's going to be really exciting for you to step into this new era of yeah. your life and showing, you know, people all sides oh, yeah. of you. And then I well, wonder what like we'll whole, spring like out of that. After we're done with this, there are future things. Uh-huh. Like Tim Schreiber was actually kind of said to me in a way, um, we, he wants me to go into a school and actually work for a Special Olympics. So there might be future things that I can't talk about now. Okay, okay. Yeah, I know, I know. It's like the, I know. It's like, here's a it's present, like a don't open it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you will. You'll be, because you know, because that's the thing. It's like so many things are out there that can be done. Yeah. Like with rebranding things and helping them. Because you know, like when you hear that word champion, like it brings a different vibe. Yeah. It re it says something more about who you are as a person. Yeah. Not like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm a champion in this. Mm. But when you say like you're a champion swimmer or you say you're a, something like that, then you become a real in incredible athlete. Yeah. Yeah. So for everybody out there who wants to get more involved or something like that with any kind of special abilities, like maybe it's like, and from our conversation, I feel like maybe it's just reaching out to different facilities, different organizations, and just showing up to give your time, love, and energy. Yeah. And that's really what, like, so, so what can we do as a society to, what, to do something? Basically, if you guys want to do something is, Find your nearest UCP first. Okay. Call, check in, like, okay, like, what do I have to do in order to become a volunteer? Okay. That would be the first thing with them. With Special Olympics, you can either become a certified coach. Oh. Or you can even become, like, an assistant coach. Like, you can actually start your own team. Like, if you have, like, you with your background in bodybuilding, even though I know you're not big into it that much, you could even have athletes that want to become powerlifters. You can start your own powerlifting team. Okay. If you have family members that are teachers in high schools, mm -hmm. or if you have kids that are in high school or in any school, they can become create their own unified teams, which is equal numbers of people with disabilities and without disabilities, and they're playing the same sport. <sighs> and that's a really cool aspect. Then you have if you could even create your own fundraiser mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for special needs. You can even do create your own event. If you're willing to connect with a facility of some sort, you can even say, okay, can we host our own event? Like what champion challenge was like, you can actually host your own event and figure out logistics and all that fun stuff. Okay. Like it's okay. basically whatever you want to make it to be. Yeah. Whatever. Like, Cause it's just time and energy. It's really just like yeah, the how much you want to put into it is what you're going to get out of it. A hundred percent. Every time. I love that. And you're going to yeah. get a lot of love back, unconditional love and a lot of lessons oh, yeah. about yourself, about the world, how to be more grateful, how to look at everything, maybe yeah. from the eyes. Of you know, and that's the biggest, I literally, like I was telling you earlier, I saw, I've seen clients that can't move their bodies at all. And they're in 
wheelchairs that are shaped like beds because they can't move their bodies at all. I've seen athletes that are in wheelchairs at all. They can't even talk to you. They can't, they literally have to be tube fed. Oh. So like, this is like literally like what the aspect is, you know, it's like, okay, like how do we include everyone? You know, like how do you let them become a part of our lives? Right. Right. Yeah. I love this. <laughs> So your message, if you had one to tell everybody about the organizations, about people with special abilities, what would you tell the world right now? Basically, just don't exclude them. Include them in every day of your life and let them become a part of who you are. Yeah. That's basically exactly what I would say. <laughs> yeah, oneness. We're all equal. We're all one. Include yeah. everybody. Yeah. Robert, this was amazing. Thank you so much for joining me and for talking about all no of this and sharing your heart and your experience with everybody. <laughs> I appreciate you so much. And I'm so glad that we've been connected for as long as we have yeah. and that we, you know, are, are friends. And I'm just, Definitely. I'm very grateful for you, my friend. Definitely. Okay. <laughs> right, well, good. thank you so much, everybody, for listening. And we will see you on the next one. Peace.